what's uh, Sama have to do to take to take that next jump, whatever you, you know, whatever that next jump is, from good to great, good to good to very good, whatever that would be. Yeah, really excited about him. Uh, his his eagerness to learn, his determination, his work ethic is is unbelievable. Um, just some of the small details, like my my role for him is alignment, assignment, read key, track. After that, cut it loose and play fast. And his ability to take what is taught to him in the, in the meeting room, to then apply it to um, our running back drills, to then apply that to, to the practice field in a team setting, has been awesome. Just some of the small details in terms of um, ball security. He's done a really good job so far. Uh, some of the small details and pass protection, just technique. Other than that, he's really trending in a positive direction for us. Carson was a guy last year who showed a lot of flashes. It looks like he can do kind of, kind of do it all out of the backfield. How is, how has he impressed you? And what's his ceiling? And what do you feel like his uh, defines his skill set? I guess. Yeah, he's such a good athlete. Um, someone who can definitely, and I think along with Abu. Someone who can definitely be an all-down back. He's a slasher. I still think the kid's growing, physically developing. You're talking two young kids. Um, but he catches the ball well. He has the ability to, to catch the ball and turn a, a four- to five-yard gain into a, a really explosive play. His ability to identify defenses within a pass protection standpoint, um, he's very... He's instinctive, and just his ability to use his his body in space, really good body control for a 215-pound-plus back um, is above average. I mean, he's, he's really done a, a nice job. I like the way both of those guys, in terms of the foundation that has been in place for them uh, over the course of the last, you know, eight to ten months, and how they continue to to have the, you know, a low ego about them. You know, they want to get better. There's a desire. It's not a want ethic. They don't want things just handed to them. It's an unbelievable work ethic. Um, and with what the offensive staff has done with them is, is awesome. It just continue to see them grow daily has been, has been great. What is it going to take overall from both the returners and the guys that are joining the room this year to be one of the more threatening run games in the Big 12? Yeah, I think with, you know, college football these days, to have a connected group. You know, there's so many things that pu is pulling at individuals. Um, it gets harder and harder. You know, in everything can be so individualized. Um, I think as a whole, the most connected units, the most connected teams are gonna be the ones that are extremely successful. So to continue to have a, a group that invests in each other, uh, that rallies around each other, that pours into each other's um, success, that's what's going to propel the group. And what I see is, is a group that's pulling the rope in the same direction. Um, they're working hard for each other, not against each other. They want to see each other excel. Um, they're all a little bit different from a, from a skill standpoint. Um, still really pretty young group. You know, there's one... I think there's one individual in that room that went through spring ball last year, uh, A.J. Harris. And so it's a, it's a really, really young group. And um, just to see them grow and fl flourish daily has been, has been great. You mentioned Abu and all down back in the same sentence, which I, I thought was very interesting. What, what is your definition of all down back? Does that mean 30 carries a game or does that mean all – running back situations, whether it's up the middle or catching passes or, or, or so just define all down back. Yeah, all situations. Uh, the ability to, from a scheme standpoint in the run game, can do it all. You know, whether it be internal, uh, inside zone, you know, your dual play, just vertical double teams, pin pull perimeter runs, the ability to create uh, separation of man coverage. Uh, if we ask him to, you know, whether it be on the perimeter in a pass concept or you know, isolate him with maybe a linebacker in, in, in a passing concept, uh, be able to pick up pressures on third down. You're not having to protect him 
in any situation, meaning take him off the field in third down when it's identifying pressures. Um, the ability to do everything you ask within the, uh, the overall picture of the offense. So he has the ability to do all of the situations that you may ask any of the running backs to do. You, d you don't have to maybe personnel him and put him in only on certain situations. He can do, he, he can do everything. Interesting. What were your thoughts, and maybe you, haven't, maybe you haven't gone back and watched tape, I assume you have, of the K-State game last year, of, of Sama in the K-State game? Yeah, pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, I was actually watching that one at home. You know, uh, I do have a relationship with a lot of the, the members uh, on staff at, at Kansas State. Um, but to start off, that, I mean, that play, right, that first play of the game embodies how you want an offense to play. You're dictating the terms, and you're winning early to win late. The way the offensive line came off the ball, how multiple that play was in terms of, you know, you're in 13 personnel in an unbalanced formation, two detached, bringing in a tight end from detached to attached to the core, having another tight end opposite, swiping him. He's making the play right, then the, the linebacker's overplaying it, and then now the backside corner has to make the play, and a boo. His alignment was perfect. His read key told him what to do. Uh, Steve-O made it right, and then he made one defender miss, and he attacked with, with his stiff arm and then used his speed to, to outrun everyone. That play embodies how you want an offense to operate with that level of detail, that level of physicality, um, and how multiple yet simple it is. Multiple in, you know, in the personnel, in the formation, and yet it's just – one of the core four to five run schemes. And what the staff did was, was unbelievable in that game, yet putting guys in a position to have success, um, keeping it simple, especially with the conditions, right? Keeping it simple so they you know, didn't have to go out there and process and think football. They just cut it loose and play football. And when you can do that, you're going to have ultimate success. Coach, what have you seen from Jalen Jackson since um, he's transferred here. Obviously, you guys haven't had a ton of time to work together, but what have you kind of seen from him? Yeah, he's pretty dynamic. Um, he's just different than the other guys in the room, right? Uh, a little bit, from a stature standpoint, smaller, doesn't play that way. Um, we've done one-on-ones with, with linebackers in terms of pass protection, and when you have the mindset to be a pass protector, uh, that's 90% of it. Technique, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, just being able to create leverage, understand his aiming point on where he wants to block the defender, uh, just some of the fine-tuned technique things. But, you know, his ability to catch the ball in space and then use his speed to outrun everyone. Um, and he's, he's been through it, right? He's been through a spring ball. He's, he's played college football. He's got a level of maturity that you desire. Um, he understands the install to the practice field to applying it to team reps. Um, he's, he's done a really nice job, and I appreciate the way he's come in and, and bought into the standards, um, the culture, what's expected, yet enhancing that daily. And my goal is to continue to give him and the group the ability to grow. And when we can continue to enhance those championship habits, really good things will happen. To follow up, you talked a lot there about his maturity and maybe some of his experience. What is the value of that with a running back room with Abu and Carson that maybe haven't seen as many things at the college level as he has? Oh, I, th I think it's really good. I mean, anytime uh, you've been through a college football season I mean, multiple times, you know, I, you have experience. And um, for those guys to rely on him, um, to rely on A.J. Harris, I think A.J. Harris is an unbelievable role, role model and mentor for all those guys. You know, just someone you can rely on when you have any questions, situation, what have you. Um, good for those young guys to rely on. Dylan Lee is a guy that really should still be in high school right now. What have you seen from him through his first couple of months with the program in terms of readiness, ability to compete right away? What, what have you seen from that? Yeah, uh, a lot. He, for a kid who should be in high school, um, really intelligent. Just his foundation of football, his football IQ, just his IQ in general. He's a really intelligent kid. His athletic ability, 
he's one of the stronger kids. I know he's, he might be the strongest running back in the room, just from a, a, a weight room standpoint. Um, but he's, he's got a raw ability, uh, excited to continue to work with him daily. He, uh, he's very competitive and very mature for, for a younger kid. He, uh, he's done a nice job just learning just some of the, you know, you want to go so fast as a young kid, so fast, so fast, but to be able to understand, you know, your body and be able to, to speed up, to slow down and change direction, some of those things, once he really irons that out, uh, it'll be, uh, he'll be really successful.